Hello there guys and welcome to another Forza Horizon 5 video on my channel. Yes, I am back. So a massive thank you to Northern Lemming for commenting on the post that I put on a number of weeks ago now when I first had the issue with the recording. Uh, he responded and then we had a bit of private chatting in Discord and we've come to a result. I am now able to start recording and live streaming again because I can now get the gameplay on my PC via the Xbox app again. Previously I used Xbox Console Companion but after uh, quite a bit of uh, digging we managed to find a solution to be able to allow me to connect my Xbox to the PC via the usual Xbox app on the PC. So I'm now able to record again so I do apologise for the uh, period of time that I've been away. I think it's been nearly two months since I've done a regular video. I've done uh, the odd video here and there regarding the Eliminator with pre-recorded gameplay but hopefully now we'll be able to resume um, what we refer to as a normal schedule uh, on the channel with uh, seasonal videos and the usual guide that you're used to on Shiloh Gaming. So again a massive thank you to Northern Lemming for persisting with various uh, techniques until we find a till till we found a solution. I really do appreciate you my friend um, and here we are back with another video. Just a quick disclaimer before we dive into the content of today's video, because I have been away for a while, uh, for a while and I'm not used to uh, recording in this format, I may be a bit iffy, I'm probably going to mess things up and if I do miss things out um, I would just take that with a, a pinch of salt because I have been away for a while, I've kind of not been in the routine, um, I haven't recorded a video with audio for two months, um, so do bear with me, I will try my best uh, and hopefully in a few weeks we'll be back to a kind of norm um, with my commentary on these videos and the layout of them um, in relation to what you guys are used to from previous seasonal videos. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Series 19 or Midnight at Horizon uh, winter slash dry season. Um, so obviously we've missed the first two weeks of the Midnight at Horizon. If you didn't notice there is lots of kind of um, whatever you call them uh, illuminated uh, lights, neon lights, uh, specifically on the Mueller here uh, or Mueller uh, drag strip uh, field area. There's a massive row of kind of containers with neon lights, and uh, dotted around the festivals, there's also neon lights to represent the Midnight at Horizon theme. Um, so, because we um, have missed the first two weeks, uh, we are diving into week three of this series. I managed to get uh, 52 points and 42 points respectively in the previous two seasons so I only need actually 62 points for the event of the year because um, I've already unlocked the 9-11 uh, however if you are uh, only starting this series this week I'll try my best to help you out in this video with some tunes, some tips for all of the challenges we won't go into as much detail as perhaps you have been used to in the past uh, until I get back into the groove um, but we'll go through it, try and get you uh, some points and hopefully if you complete winter and spring you might be able to at least get your 911 GT3 uh, and obviously the individual season rewards in relation to the winter and the spring uh, seasons. Okay then, so I do remember that we used to go through the rewards uh, briefly at the start of each video, so of course this week in the winter for 20 points we have the brand new to Forza, uh, and therefore also Forza Horizon 5, the 2021 Lexus LC500. Uh, this is not a recycled car, um, actually none of the cars in this season series have been or will be recycled um, which is it's a good sign however there have been uh, many other issues with the game uh, to make up for the uh, for the usual drama that goes on with each update so this is a very very cool car uh, if you haven't yet driven it in the um, monthly rivals I would suggest you do so it's a very fun car to drive actually and I really do like the engine um, it actually quite suits the ball at your circuit that we're on in the monthly rivals uh, and if you want to go and try and beat my time no it don't took me about half an hour uh, to post that time after many many flagged uh, runs if you want to go and uh, try and beat my time then do feel free it's a really nice car to drive uh, and it's, it's nice to see it in Forza as well as the new Cadillacs um, probably the only disappointing car in this season series is the Rimac Nevera which as an AR12 proved is considerably worse um, than the Rimac Concept 2 that it is supposed to be the production version of 
Anyway, for 40 points, we have the ATS GT from 2018. Uh, I'm going to be frankly honest with you, I am pretty sick of this car by now because uh, it appeared way too many times in Horizon 4 and in Horizon 5 as well. Uh, it's not a very interesting car in my opinion, it's very bland. Um, so, uh, I guess I'll probably be removing that from my garage as soon as I lock it, especially given that I am on max cars and I keep having to remove duplicates. Um, Okay, so they are of course the season rewards for this week, uh, and the total points available is 70, you need 20 and 40 respectively for those uh, vehicles, and hopefully we'll be able to get you as many points as we can in this video. Starting off then, this only applies to those of you that have the Rally Adventure expansion, we have the Rally Adventure uh, events, so um, they've kind of stuck with the same thing that they did when they introduced the Hot Wheels uh, seasonal events. There's one PR stunt and one seasonal championship on the expansion, uh, and if you didn't realise, there's also still, at the other end of the festival playlist, the Hot Wheels events as well, if you are still going on the Hot Wheels expansion, I can say for myself that I am not, um, however they are there if you want to complete them for 100% or some extra points. So if you do not own this expansion you can buy it, you can still buy it from the Microsoft Store as part of the expansion bundle where you'll get both the expansions that have been released now or you can buy it separately I think, I'm not sure, I don't know if you can actually. Um, or of course you can get the premium add-ons bundle which gets you all of the add-ons, car pass and all of that uh, jiggity jaggedy. Um, so uh, let's just quickly run through these uh, Rally Adventure events. So we've got the Dunes Danger Sign, uh, which requires S2. Um, so I'll suggest uh, the cars for them when we go to the PR stunts on the main map because they are pretty much uh, the same cars for all of the PR stunts this week. And then we have the Neon Knight Seasonal Championship, which is A Class Trucks. Um, so I find that the truck pictured in the thumbnail, there, the Tank Pool Mercedes, is, is quite awful to drive. So I would suggest that you use the Mercedes Unimog however it does like to tip over quite a lot so I would be careful when you're going around the corners especially with all those tight corners on the rally expansion um, but it's definitely the better out of the two trucks available uh, in that class so they are the rally adventure events I don't want to spend too much time on them because obviously they are only available to the people with the rally adventure expansion um, and also, if you want to get some conversations going in the comments, maybe we can have a bit of conversation about the Rally Adventure expansion. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Have you enjoyed it? I personally finished it within four or five days, um, but that did include tryharding on the PR stunts and various other things. I've completed most of the, um, like the accolades or reputation challenges or whatever they're called. Um, it was a really good expansion. I might do a, a video on it now that I've got, uh, or a live stream now that I've got my uh, ability to record and stream back. Um, so we'll see where we go from there. Um, but that is the Rally Adventure expansion. I think you're probably getting the gist by now that I'm not in the uh, in the groove of recording, so I'm going off on massive tangents like I always used to. So we'll try to keep that to a minimum uh, from this point in the video, but I cannot guarantee it because at the end of the day it is me and uh, that is what I end up doing. So, moving on swiftly, we have the Forzathon events. Um, so, still sticking with the usual Forzathon event format. First of all, we have the Shelby's Muscle Weekly Forzathon Challenge, which will get you 5 points and the 80 or 160 Forzathon points. For this one, you'll be needing to use the 2020 Forge Mustang Shelby GC500. Make sure you don't get this confused with the 2016 Shelby GT350R or uh, the 2013 Shelby GT500. Uh, they do look, that one does look a bit different, however the Shelby 2016 does look quite similar, so make sure you don't get it confused. Uh, it is S1836 stock, as you can see at the top of the screen, that is the stock PI for reference if you're looking at it that way. Uh, with this car, you don't really need to tune it, uh, and it will help you actually if you keep it stock for this second challenge, which is to earn an ultimate burnout skill. Um, so essentially for this, I would suggest um, that you uh, stand, and if you, especially if you're using manual with clutch, um, you can press the clutch in and, uh, whoops, I shouldn't have done that there. Press the clutch in and uh, rev it mad, and then let go of the clutch. Uh, and keep revving uh, so you'll get some wheel spin because it's rear wheel drive and hopefully then you'll be able to get an ultimate burnout skill by uh, doing loads of wheel spin off the line uh, when you set off. You can also try it with, if you're using auto or normal manual, you can hold the handbrake in and rev it that way and um, that should probably work. 
Um, but either way, you just need to get loads of spinning of the wheels when you launch your car to get uh, the burnout skill. Next up is to paint the car's body. Very, very simple. Just go into the uh, livery editor in a uh, house or garage festival site. Um, then just paint the car's body. You can paint other parts if you want. Just make sure you paint the main body. Uh, so you can uh, share it if you want to. You can just save it to the current car. Uh, back out of the festival or house. Uh, go for a little drive and then it should pop up to see you've completed it. And the final challenge is even easier than that really. is to drive 5 miles or 8 kilometres in your Mustang. Um, very, very simple. If you want to get it done quickly, go on the motorway, maintain maximum speed. Uh, otherwise, go for a little bit of a, a, a chill drive, especially if, if you've got a, a, a driving wheel like a Logitech or anything. Um, go for a little drive and you'll have completed the Forza Hunt Challenge. Next up then, we have the daily Forza Hunt Challenges. Now, as usual, I always used to say this, if you need any help with these in particular throughout the week, let me know in the comments section. Um, or send me a message on Xbox or Discord and I'll be more than happy to help you with them. I'm not going to spend too much time on them because they are generally quite simple but if you're having any issues with them, if you suspect they might be bugged, I can test that for you and then we can report them if they are bugged um, which is never never in doubt really with this game anymore, unfortunately. Um, so uh, yeah, if you're having any issues with them, do let me know uh, and we'll be happy to help you out. In regards to the forced on shop, these are getting less and less spectacular as they go on in my opinion. Obviously I've noticed that as a trend even whilst I've not been doing the videos. As you can see by the amount of forced on points that I've got at the bottom left there, that basically tells the tale in itself. Um, I wouldn't really recommend anything here, uh, unless you've got some force on points lying around, you might want to buy the CLK given that it is 2 million uh, ish, or a couple of million in the auto show, um, but it, it's not really that essential. Um, the only thing it's really good for is S1 dirt racing and uh, off-road PR stunts, but um, yeah, not really that special uh, and no surprises there. Moving on into the seasonal events section, I just want to quite try and do this quite quickly because I know I've wasted quite a lot of time at the start of the video faffing around, explaining and going off on massive tangents. So we'll bring it back, uh, try and control ourselves and whiz through the seasonal events section here. First up then is the trial. Uh, if you haven't noticed um, this uh, series, Midnight's at Horizon, we've been getting stock showdowns as the trials, which I'm not going to complain about. At least it means that the AI supposedly can't cheat with some massively OP cars. However, anything is possible. Um, it just keeps it kind of balanced and prevents people turning up in stock cars, in tuned events, um, and getting left behind. It does kind of prevent that, which is, I suppose, is a benefit. Um, so this week we'll be driving the 1993 Nissan GTR uh, V-Spec. Uh, so I believe is that the R33, I think I'm getting that correctly. Uh, so the stock PI is B626. Now, um, if you are an experienced tuner, you'll probably realise that you can actually tune for these stock showdowns, uh, providing that the outcome uh, in, in your PI remains the same. So, for example, you could put a Forza wing on it, which usually reduces the PI, um, and then you could put something else on to get the PI back up to 626. It can't be anything lower and it can't be anything more. It's got to be precisely B626. But I found it's just easier to plod on and get on with it in a stock uh, stock car, which obviously all the AI will be using. Um, and uh, realistically, it doesn't really give you any major advantage if you decide to tune it anyway. Um, so uh, just make sure you're in the correct car uh, and you'll be alright with that one. Next up then, we have two more Event Lab features. We have one from Subi156 and one from Vex City. Uh, I don't know, actually know how you pronounce that. Uh, these do, do sound actually quite cool. I quite enjoyed last week's Event Labs and I've, uh, I've enjoyed a few of them in the time that I've not been doing videos, to be fair. Um, so for the first one, you need A-Class Rally Monsters. So for this one, um, I would suggest the Hoonigan Cozy V2, the one that you actually use uh, in the plane showcase right at the start of the game. I've got a tune for that that's the top of A-Class if you want to use that, but my preferred for A-Class Rally Monsters is the Opal Manta 400. My A-Class tune for that one is a bit more lively, it's got the Turbo Rally, um, it's it's really fun to drive actually, so um, I would probably take that one for the Hot Wheels Super Scramble. 
In regards to Osaka Sea Sports Street Race, it's S1 Track Toys. Um, um, you do actually need the same car I noticed for the Warp Speed Seasonal Championship on the Hot Wheels. Um, I do have quite a lot of suggestions for this one, so I'm just going to head over to my garage in my favourites to show you this one, um, because I, I do quite like my Track Toys, it seems, even if I didn't know it. Okay, so we'll just quickly whiz through the selection here. So first of all, the 2016 Dodge Viper ACR. I do have to mention that that is uh, Andrew 9565's uh, tune, uh, and also the design is by him as well. Dobra Mihai, you'll probably have seen him on the channel in the comments section. Um, then we have the Ford Supervan 3, um, which is my uh, grip tune. The Ford Shelby GT 350R, again my tune. One of the first tunes I created in the game, but still going strong. Um, with nice racing stripes. I would also like to point out that the design on this uh, transit here is the uh, by Ward Fiandi. Uh, you'll probably also see him in the comments section. Moving along here, then we also have the McLaren 620R. I do really like this one as a purist S1 road car. And the McLaren 765LT, again as a purist um, S1 road car, rear wheel drive. Next up we have the Seasonal Playground Games Reach Forward the Stars, which will get you three points in an aerial nomad. Remember with uh, Seasonal Playground Games, even if your team loses, you'll get the reward. Um, so if, you, if you're losing and it's getting towards the end, there's no need to quit because you'll still get the reward. So just stick with it. Um, doesn't matter if you win or you lose, but just have a bit of fun and see what the outcome is. For this one, you need to have B-Class, um, but it has to be front-wheel drive. For this one, I do have a few suggestions, but there's probably going to be one that stands out uh, as a, the best car to use for this seasonal playground game. So first of all, the Honda Civic Type R, that is pretty much a road tune, however it is running rally tyres, so it could be suitable. Moving along, we have the Renault Clio RS200 from 2013, that's on drag tyres, so I probably wouldn't recommend that one. And the Volvo 850R from 97, rally tyres. Really good uh, road car, but also quite grippy on the grass. And then the, probably the best car to use for this one is the Renault Megane R26 because it's on off-road race tyres, which are obviously going to provide the best grip in front-wheel drive. And overall, it's probably uh, the most nimble because it's also really, really light. Moving swiftly on, we have this week's three seasonal PR stunts. Now, usually I would show you a gameplay of me attempting these, so you, just so you can kind of get a visual picture of what it'll look like when you're completing it. But for the sake of this uh, comeback video, I'm just going to leave that out and just give you a few tune suggestions instead this time. And then once we get back into the normal format, we'll return with the uh, with the gameplay of me completing them. So first up is the Baja Show Junk Danger Sign, then we have the Barranco Trailblazer and finally the Ladera Speed Zone. All of them uh, will get you the same reward and all of them this week are S2 class anything goes. Uh, same for the um, Rally Adventure PR stunt as I showed and also the same for the Hot Wheels PR stunt, however for that one it's a drift zone. For drift zones, I tend to use uh, Formula Drift cars. They're easy to use, rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. But I do also have a tune on uh, the Unicorn, and I, uh, I like my purest rear-wheel drive Ford Shelby GT350R from 2016 on that one. So, referring back to these PR stunts, I've got a few cars uh, that you can kind of mix and match with these uh, and hopefully get them completed. Okay then, so especially for the speed zone, but also possibly for the danger sign, we have the Bugatti Devo. Then moving along for the um, danger sign and the trailblazer, the Hoonigan RS200. Um, for po possibly the um, danger sign and the uh, trailblazer, the Mercedes AMG 1. Um, and they are probably your best choices with these three PR stunts. To round off the seasonal events section, we have two seasonal championships. Remember, these are locked to the highly skilled driver tar difficulty, and they can be completed in solo or co-op, depending on if you want to do them in convoy, if you want to do it in solo, perhaps if you don't have um, Xbox Live. So the first one is called Buggy Nights. It's cross-country, 
and the restriction is B-Class Unlimited Buggies. For this one, uh, I've actually got both of the Illumi Craft buggies tuned, so the uh, 2015 Illumi Craft C10 that's uh, in the base game, uh, I've got a tune for that, which is all-wheel drive, fairly easy to drive, but not very fast. Um, and then, the uh, obviously, the Rally Adventure brought in another uh, brand new uh, 2021 Illumi Craft uh, buggy, so that's also I've also tuned that up to um, top B class all-wheel drive, um, 495 horsepower I think with the stock engine, the stock amount of horsepower, race brakes, uh, transmission, etc., etc. Again, it's not the fastest, but if you have the Rally Adventure expansion and you own, therefore, um, that newer Illumi Craft, I'd probably recommend that more than the old one. In terms of home by midnight, this is road racing and the restriction is A-Class GT cars, not to be confused with Super GT because I read it wrong on the first time of uh, um, browsing at it and uh, ended up going and favouriting a couple of Super GT cars, then realised that it's normal GT cars, so make sure you select the correct one in your garage. For this one, if you have car pass, the BMW M8 Competition um, is a really, really good car. Very solid uh, car, despite it being nearly two tons. It's really, really fast, and the rally tyres help it be quite grippy through the corners. However, if you just own the base game and want a bit of a, an easier to drive car, the 2010 Maserati GTS uh, is the one for you. Even though it's rear wheel drive, um, it's really easy to drive. The Forza Wing provides loads of downforce. I believe it's on semi slick tyres. Um, and um, it, it's got enough horsepower to keep you going but it, it, it prefers uh, going around the corners uh, and is relatively easy to drive in terms of that. Okay we are getting near to the end of the video now so we've got this week's treasure hunt vantage point the treasure clue this week is Horizon will be proud of your Aston ishing based jump. This will get you three points and 100 Forza points once you smash through the treasure chest. As usual I'll give a quick rundown of the treasure clue to give you the criteria of what you need to do um, then I'll show you the location of the treasure chest at which point if you do not want it to be spoiled for yourself I suggest that you go and find it yourself first um, or pause the video or skip a bit whatever you want to do uh, to avoid it being spoiled for you. So for this treasure hunt you'll need to get in the 2019 Aston Martin Vantage that is S1801 uh, stock PI it's available from the Auto Show and then you'll need to get at least one star on the base jump danger sign which can be found uh, near the top of the map in the canyon at the Horizon Rush Festival outpost so you need to just get one star on that one and then treasure the treasure clue um, sorry, the treasure chest location will pop up on your map. Um, then you'll have like a little circle on your map. I'll go and show you exactly where the treasure chest is located so you can find it easily if, the, if, the, if that is what you are wanting to do. Okay then, so for those of you that are wanting to know the exact location of the treasure chest, you'll need to go to the pretty much what I refer to as the centre of Guanajuato, um, where the Christmas tree was located in the Christmas period. Um, and where uh, that's actually the video of where Ken Block did his kind of drifty thing uh, that's where that was located um, so it's actually the trial is around here so if you've got your map filtered um, unlike mine the trial will be about here and then you need to go to kind of the centre of Guanajuato where this statue is um, and you know, there's the trial up there then all you need to do is smash through the top of it so 100 thousand points and 3 points towards the festival playlist. Next up you'll need to hop in a drift car and head up to the top of the La Gran Caldera Volcano to photograph your drift car with the neon tank on the side of that greenhouse there. Very very easy, you just need to go to the top of the volcano and where there's the kind of housing area um, near the top um, on the flat area, uh, you'll be able to see one of the houses and there on the side will be the neon tank. If it is kind of nice in the game, the neon tank will glow uh, the colour that it is on there. If it's daytime, you probably will be hard to spot, but you'll still be able to see it and that will complete the hashtag neon heights um, photo challenge. This week's Horizon Open Challenge Heavy Hitters wants you to complete a Horizon Open custom race in any classic muscle car. So you need to enter um, a custom race. Uh, if you've got a classic muscle car tuned to a specific class, obviously select the custom class um, to whatever class and um, race surface that that is applicable for. Um, and then you just need to complete a Horizon Open. You don't need to win anything, you just need to complete it in your muscle car. 
Not going to go into too much detail regarding the rivals, but for both of these, you just need to post a clean lap to complete each of them. So you don't need to beat your rival, you just need to make sure that your lap is clean. If your lap has an exclamation mark next to it, that means it's dirty. Um, so basically, in essence, um, avoid hitting walls, avoid using rewind and avoid uh, getting reset for whatever reason. If you somehow manage to roll your car, um, they are basically the only criteria you need. Post a clean lap for both of them and they will be completed. Um, remember, with the points total, that's added to the series and then it's divided by four. So you'll get four points added to the series for each of them and then you'll get one point added on to each season for each of them. Uh, so that's eight and two in total. And finally, we come to the Hot Wheels events, but re realistically, we've already covered these because the S2 class drift zone we've already talked about, and track toys we covered in the seasonal championship on the main map, so we're not going to go into any more detail regarding them challenges. Okay, that just about wraps up this video, guys. I hope it has been helpful. However, obviously, I've not been informed due to the two months absence of these videos, so I hope you enjoyed uh, it as much as you could, and I hope you got as much info out of it as I was able to provide ride in my uh, dodgy kind of <laughs> in my dodgy form i will hopefully be back next week with the same kind of video uh, and in a few weeks we'll hopefully be back to uh, normal with the layout and uh, kind of my commentary on these videos hopefully it'll be a bit better by then i'll kind of got used to it again so thank you for watching um if you did enjoy it then please like and subscribe to the channel it massively helps me out i'm pleased to say that we haven't really lost any subscribers during the period of no videos in fact we have actually gained a few subscribers from uh, the dotted videos that i've posted throughout the period so thank you to you guys that have joined the channel uh, and i hope you uh, like this content that i'm now putting out again so again massive thank you to northern lemming for providing the solution i really do appreciate you my friend um, honestly i don't know where i'd be without your uh, without your help last night and uh, hopefully we'll also be able to do a stream at some point in the near future as well but we won't talk about that in too much detail because i can't guarantee anything just yet so, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!